and tonight's topic is gardening tips for beginners on a budget. Hey everyone, how you doing out there? Hola. I uh, boo booed here. I forgot to change one thing here. Sure I forgot to. I got to teleport out to the garden. There we go. <laughs> I love teleport systems, and they don't run on gasoline either. <laughs> All right. So, several things I want to talk about before we jump both feet into the garden. Um, one of them happens to be, and I haven't seen a announcement of it, so I'm going to make an announcement here. I know she said she had made her 4,000 watch hours, and that was Courtney at White Family Farm. Last thing I seen she, her say, she said she was waiting on confirmation. Yeah, well, I actually got a an ad on one of her videos. Well, so, my pastor's YouTube channel is not monetized. He yeah. did not authorize monetization, and um, he still gets ads on his. Well, I, he's, I, got I us, never, he's got us all beat. I've never he's seen one, one, the one on there, yeah. So let me go back to the beginning here first and, to, and say hi to everyone that commented. First in was CR, that's Creative Redundancy from North of the Border, Michael58. Okay, just now the ads stopped playing on my other computer over here that went live. So it played like six minutes worth of ads at the beginning of mine. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Hey, hey, I credit for well, it. Well, the sad part was is Charles was watching one of my videos mm -hmm. and an ad popped up on one of my videos and I'm not monetized. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, I am, so well, hopefully I get doing, paid for they're it. They're doing it to everybody in little incremental pieces. Yeah. But the way they're doing it, you can't fight them for payment on it. Yeah. Nice, huh? Yeah. And the next one in the house here was the Kraken. Then JIT prepared this info, and they're ch chatting back and forth. Then uh, Courtney at White Family Farm came in, and Adam and Eve's Farm. Hey, guys. Uh, Carol, Fishes and Loves Life. Uh, Uncle Al came in and said hi. Kathy, North Star Prep Stetter is here. Food Forest Permaculture. Hey, Howie. And Dustin, that's Courtney's husband. Uh, Duncan, 1900 Homestead. Everyone's chit chatting, coming down. See who else new coming in here. Everyone's, uh, David Lynn's here. Hey, David. Another great channel to check out. He got he has some uh, some pretty good preparedness stuff over there. And we're going down. Everyone's chit chatting. Uh, Prairie Rider, that's Lori from north of the border as well. Mary Beth Smith. And, and everybody's just chatting up a storm here beforehand. Yeah, we like, don't have to say nothing then, right? Uh, we just sit here and watch and laugh and giggle and we don't have to do nothing. Just let side chat go. All right. Stringfield Ridge Farm is in. Good. All right. And, uh, and Christy Betts. All right, that brings us up. Everybody that has posted, I said hi to. So welcome. Ellen, good evening. Now, before we get going, I have a favor to ask everybody. All right, I hold this topic kind of dear. And all of everyone, everyone here should hold it dear too because we want everybody to plant a garden if they can. Hold and some a deer. I, I can't hold a deer. They're, they're, they're furs disgusting. The horns hurt when they hit you with them, and their hooves are razors. I'm not holding a deer. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, what? Um, so we really should want everyone, if they can, or in, 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 on a, a place where they can go a garden to grow a garden. Now, there's a lot of people that are, all, oh, I don't know how I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to, you know. No. And so that's what today is. Froze. So uh, tonight is yeah. the tips by the way, Gil. Yeah, I got a letter from Disney's attorney said they're going to be coming after you if you keep that up. Yeah, well, actually, uh, I, I tagged them back saying, "Hey, I have I've not tagged myself as being the being Elsa or what's or the other one. So you owe me because this is this is uh my thing being frozen. 
question. It's either right. Elsa or Anna. I can't remember. Yeah, Anna, yeah. Okay, so um, we really, everyone, if you could share this out on social media, get it out there to have others look at, because we want them to learn these, you know, the tips we're going to offer tonight for beginners uh, that are trying to get, you know, set up, especially if they're on a budget, try to get something growing, because we want them to grow some food so they can do it. And yes, Oh, Kathy, yeah, I'm gonna sick my, you, I'm gonna sick, I'm gonna sick my grandson on you because he runs around with with the carrots all the time. So he's the one with the carrots. Yeah, but you don't don't be mean to our favorite mod. <laughs> well, when, when when the little four and a half year old goes up to her and, and starts tugging on her, saying carrot, carrot, horses, horses, yeah. Oh, Kaylin's in the house now. All right. So basically, we want to get as many people out there to get this information to them so we can get them to grow in a garden. Because if they're growing a garden, even if it's just a little bit of things, you know, that's less stuff they're going to the store for, which means there'll be more out there for other people's, which means we won't have a big rush because there'll be stuff there. All right. So let's go back to, let's go on to this. And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, I hope. Simple stuff. Here's a simple tip. If you're a beginner gardener and you don't want to tear up your lawn and everything, like Steve at Corsair Trainers, and you're in a new place, get some buckets. Start doing container gardening. And if you don't like the great buckets, paint them. Make them artwork. Make them cutesy. Ooh, somebody put a heart on one. Uh-huh. Yuck. Now, one of the things there is um, these bigger tubs. We've actually done this. The inner tub has the holes drilled in the bottom. The outer tub has a hole drilled a little bit up the side. So there's a little bit of water catchment in there, but when it drains too much, you see it coming out the other one, but it maintains a little bit of water in the base so that the, the other one can get to it. Sort of, it's um, sort of like a little miniature wiki tub setup. And then here's a whole bunch of ideas. You know, well, I like the one up here in the upper right, taking the milk cartons, and lining them with uh, filter fabric or the weed blocker stuff. And you instantly have instant pots. And then of course you got the, using the, the uh, um, cement blocks down, uh, sort of uh, Bouchard, uh, Brett, get my uh, tongue working here. The Bouchard Homestead, they went and put in a bunch of those. And you know, if you ever want to, you know, do a vertical stuff like with beans and stuff, pole beans are great for going vertical. You can also do cantaloupe, which I just planted several today that love to crawl up things, and cucumbers. All right, and so you got the little tubs. Don't fill these tubs full of gasoline. Fill them full of dirt and grow something. <laughs> That's a comment from Dave from Dave's uh, live stream earlier. Right, folks. When you grow stuff, make sure you know what you're growing and it's suitable for your area. And again. Stop growing lettuce, okay? It drives me nuts because I see a garden, beautiful garden, but they have uh, how many acres of lettuce, Gil, Dave? I don't know. I, I, the lettuce, lettuce plants I got, the, go ahead. The, plant, the number of lettuce plants I got this year for me and my wife is six. That's all I need. Exactly. Six Grow lettuce only plants. what yeah. you need unless you're going to co-op co with somebody else. Right, if you're not co-opting, then don't overgrow. Right, because I saw one hey, video. I saw one video. Somebody grow thirty-eight plants of lettuce. Unless there are rabbits, I don't know why they plant so much lettuce. Well, uh, last year I planted a bunch extra just because I wasn't sure how how well the uh, it was the germination was going to be the rate, and it would rate was like at ninety-eight percent, and I just kept it all growing. And harvested it and tossed it to my daughter's chickens. They loved it. Cut it, cut down on their feed. Uh, who here? Okay, someone just came in. I want to say hi. Uh, all right, Raven Cat uh, Homestead Cecilia came in. Sean from Alaska came in. Grammy Karen came in. What else am I missing here? Uh, it's all I see you going back a little bit. Hey guys, how you doing? All right, so yeah, there's a bunch of different ways here you can do relatively cheap. And inexpensive to, you know, start a garden without going whole hog, without having to tear up your yard already, 
uh, using uh, all sorts of containers you can use. You know, the five-gallon buckets. Uh, they don't have the ice cream buckets out here. Ice cream buckets. Save those ice cream highlight, buckets. They make great planners. Highlight Howie's comment. Howie's comment. Two weeks apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, that's if you pull the whole – that's it, especially for the, like the iceberg lettuce where you harvest the whole thing at once. But with romaine and certain leafy ones where you just peel it off and you just keep peeling it off, you can keep those going for like mm -hmm. three, four months. You know, depending where you're at, even California, you can go four months easy. My wife does it there with that stuff. So, um, but yeah, these can, you know, any type of container works great. Container gardens are great. Hey, an old 55 gallon barrel, cut it in half. Of course, I would have cut it so that you had a, a bunghole at the bottom on each one to be for a drainage, but you can do it up there. I'm waiting that. for you to show your pictures so I can talk about it. Because you got a picture I ain't seen yet. And you better show your own pictures. Actually, pictures. I actually I didn't, but I got I got the links to all my videos down below in the description. All right, so you know all all sorts of containers here hey, indoors. Truth seeker. You can grow a lot of stuff indoors. Hey, truth seeker. So indoor gardening is as an option too, especially if you have a good south facing window. A lot of neat things people use. You don't have to go whole hog and tear up your yard. But if you have these area to do it, don't go whole, whole hog well the first year. Learn. Get get someone that you know that does a garden to help you. That's the, probably one of the biggest things there. Get a local gardener to help you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add something real quick. So I'm not uh -huh. sure if you cover it because – Unfortunately, when Gil and I run back to back like this, we don't usually get a chance to sit in the back room and talk about the show beforehand. So if I let something leak that you planned on talking about before, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. But if you live in an area where there has been high, high concentrates of, you know, metals, you know, rust in the area where you're at and stuff like that, where your ground is not suitable for growing food in right now, Plant sunflowers, plant a lot of sunflowers. For the first yes. two years, do not eat the sunflower seeds. Sunflowers will pull your heavy metals out. They'll pull a lot of other impurities out of your soil so you can actually grow food in that area. Right. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of years, you can actually eat the sunflower seeds. On the, uh, make sure you throw it away a different area. Do not compost it because all you're doing is can you hear your me? Your, your microphone. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Like Dave says, it'll, it pulls out all the heavy metals. Do not eat it and do not compost it. You don't want to go back into the burn it. Uh, into the soil. So you make sure you burn it away from your property so you don't inhale it. And also, bluebells, comfrey, uh, let's see, bluebells, blue bonnets. Blue uh, comfrey will also suck up. Uh, yeah, there's another. There's another one too that'll pull up stuff. Yeah, except, I can't think oh, of well, it. No, no, I know what it is. I'm fighting in here big time, and that's morning glory. Morning types of morning glory will send down roots about thirty feet, pull all sorts of stuff from the soil. But um, no, Dave, I hadn't thought about talking about that. But a point, safety point here, everyone. Important part about burning. The sunflower stuff. If you have, can get a metal barrel, burn it in the barrel, take those ashes, put them in a trash bag, put them in the garbage, send them to the dump. Mm -hmm. You don't want that, that, that any ash from burning it to go back into your soil. Because yeah, then all you're doing is actually putting your men, the heavy metals right back into your soil. Exactly. All right. Um, now, if you look at these planters, I was going to be kind of hard to be on a small device, but these boards are not all the same size. They're different size boards. They've recycled boards for the raised planter beds. Hey, that's a great way to save money. If you have some pallets. old boards and stuff, ah, don't say pallets yet. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> um, here's here's what's called the cubic uh, the uh, the square foot garden. Now the 
the lattice work here in the middle are, are not dividers going all the way down. All there is like some, you know, quarter inch thick material on top. <laughs> it makes the grid work so you can plant in that grid work. You can do the same thing with by stretching um, nylon twine or cordage across there just, just to divide it up. But you know, that way you plant certain things and you'd be surprised if you, especially when you're planting uh, companion plants like mm -hmm. this, you'll get a lot of, um, you know, good, you know, certain certain plants chase off the buds that are affecting another plant, and other ones put certain things into the ground while others take things out of the ground. So research, if you're going to do this, this is a, uh, uh, if you're limited on area, the square foot garden is one good way to do it. And seeing as how you didn't bring up sunflowers, I guess I got another tip that mo you probably don't have at the forefront of your thoughts. Okay. If you have a garden and you have an aphid problem, because aphids love gardens, plant mm -hmm. yourself some rose bushes, get yourself some ladybugs, because you can order ladybugs. Mm -hmm. Ladybugs yeah. love rose bushes. Mm -hmm. Aphids love rose bushes as well as gardens. Plant some rose bushes near your garden, not too close, but close. And the ladybugs will take care of your aphid problem, right? And, and uh, there's something else that uh, is another companion plant. I'm just I just had a brain fart, but there's another plant that draws off the aphids. I can't remember what that plant is. Perhaps how we Howie. can throw it out there. Howie, you know what it is. You've mentioned it before. I just can't think of it either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, there are certain, certain plants that draw that. off the aphids, off the other plants because they're more enticing to the aphids. Right. All right. So here, here's one right here. You take a pallet. This one here, what they did, they just took burlap across the back. But I would rep, rep, I would recommend something a little bit more sturdy than burlap, which will rot away. Well, not only that, but it'll allow the soil to move down too, which could kill your plants. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, you can get um, like the we have the heavy duty weed blocker. I'm not talking about the crap you get at Home Depot. Um, there's some heavy duty <laughs> stuff that you can get out there, and what you can also do is you can uh, you run it up in uh, in like um, you staple it across the bottom one here, the bottom board, then you make a big pocket and you staple it across the next one, and you staple the back of each of these, then you fill it full of dirt, and then you stand it up. Uh, that way you have like a whole a bunch of little pots there. My wife did this with the, with the um. Um, strawberries last year, and we had so many friggin' strawberries. So every time I went home, I was pulling out dozens of strawberries out of one pallet. Oh, no, no, being as I've been, a, I've been a truck driver once or twice in my life. Let me bring up something that most people don't know about pallets your blue, cheap pallets. They're not cheap, they're called Chet, um, although it's spelt like cheap. Anyway, um, those are pressure treated pallets. They are designed to be used on food grade stuff. They're not designed to be planted in. Don't use them. Don't use the blue pallets that say chip on them. Please. You're going to contaminate yeah. your food stores. Buy the ugliest, rottiest looking pallets you can get because it's not treated lumber. They're also made cheaply. So they'll come apart pretty easily if you need to reset, you know, resituate boards. Get and cheap, ugly looking pallets. Don't and if use you can find them. some old, old pallets. The old ones are made out of oak, and they lasted for years and years and years. In fact, some of the ones I have down in California are oak ones. They weigh a ton. You don't toss those around lightly. They are heavy, and they'll last for many years. And a lot of times people don't realize. They think, oh, this one's too heavy. I don't want it. I'll take it. All right. Um, here's something else you can do with uh, oak pallets or any type of pallets. Uh, pallets don't have to be those almost square ones, the 40 by 48. There's some that are 40 by uh, 60, 22. uh, 20, the wider, they're um, 72. Yeah, 72. yeah, but those are shorty pallets, those are those right there are what I would have to reload 48 by 48 pallets off onto because those are half pallets. Yeah, they're only half as tall as the standard, those are halves, and yeah. I'd have to unload an entire trailer worth of babies in famil pallet or box by box onto those short pallets and it takes about eight hours yeah oh so sorry. bad yeah, memories and, and they have them in different they come in uh the 48 or the 72 inch uh length and then 40 inches the other way or they come 
and I got a couple of those, and I, you know, was, uh, out there with my, uh, you saw, watched my one where I was moving all the uh, planners, all the race planner beds over to this side of the street. Um, that's what I had all the 55 gallon barrels on. All right, now the next one here shows something else you can do. You can have a regular size one and shorties, and you can uh, do all sorts of different ways of planting with these things. All right, you can use these to fill them all the way up with dirt, wow. parchway. You can make all make pockets on these each one of these slats here to grow stuff on. It's a it's a way of doing a garden. Takes up less footprint on the ground. And you don't have to work the soil so much as a beginner. You can spend put less money into soil amendments, but into a, a raised one than you do in a big flat area trying to work it. And it's uh, it's just one of the other ways you can do a uh, a pal <coughs> thing, cheap and, and excuse me, pizza, uh, cheap and inexpensive. And, and stay on budget. And how I don't know if you have. have. I don't know if you have what I have shared here. Yep. Never mind. You uh, got it right there. No, the, the, uh, no the, of it. the rain gutter. Yeah. Okay, I'll well, show yours in a second. This I just picked out the one here. Uh, recycle old rain gutters. You can get some of these rain gutters free. People are getting re getting their, uh, new gutters on their house. The old take the old ones, especially if it's the vinyl. You don't have to worry about rust or paint on them or anything. And you just, you know, you can plant in them. Uh, you even get the little pots. Some of these have little pots in up here in the top row. You see the little the parts of the pots where they just stuck the pots in there. And they just run the water in the uh, in the gutter there to water it from, and easy. But you can fill full of soil and plant in it. You can put a drip uh, soaker hose in there to water it. A lot of ways you can uh, put this on where you don't not turn up your, your yard to put in a big garden. And you can raise... A little garden on the wall. I think that's the last one. That's the last one. So let's bring up Dave's. Okay. Can I can I answer a question that was sent to me via Discord? Sure. Because it'll be a lot easier for me to answer it here than try and type it. Miss Kathy, if you're still listening, <laughs> and I assume you is, and if not, I'll type this here in a minute. But the best way to do it is if you go to your Discord page, you'll see what looks like a picture icon at the far left of your uh, text box. Click on that, and then you can upload the picture. If the picture's too big, and it can be too big sometimes, open the picture up in Microsoft Paint. And where it says resize, keep aspect ratio, and type 50. So it reduces it by 50%. Then try and upload it. And then yeah. as it's uploading, you can add a text to it so I can, you know, see it. All right. So what Dave has here is some, you know, different examples of ring gutter, uh, uh, planters and the one, if I can focus on it, the way that one he has in the upper right there, that almost looks like pipe that was cut in half. Is that that's, rounded? That's, yeah, that's rounded. That is actually um, six inch uh, PVC sewer pipe repurposed. Yeah. yeah, just cut you know cut it in half so you got two troughs now. So there you know and construction companies that are doing uh, any new housing around your area. They'll have to be throwing away uh, scraps of four inch and six inch uh, sewer line, you know, so you can get in there and talk to talk to these guys. Hey, can we take some of the stuff off your hands so you're not having to pay to send it to the dump? So there I are like this uh, one right here. Yes, that's a, that's a very look good right one. here. Look right here. Sign casters so they can move it. Mm hmm. Yeah, if you have, uh, have a cement patio, yeah, it's perfect for moving around a cement patio. Move it out in the morning, and in the heat of the day, you move it back under shade. And the evening, you move it back out, and your lettuces will do fantastic. Right, folks, you can also do an adaptation to this rig right here. You could also use hydroponics. You get the 50-pound bag from your hydroponics store of perlite. Fill the troughs with perlite and use a nutrient solution. A lot easier. You don't have to dry it out because a lot of people who use dirt forget. Like I advised one person, they killed the peppers, and I'm looking at them. How can you kill peppers? I walked you through it, and they were about this big before they died. All right, and hang on here. Boom. Hi, we will have us live tomorrow at 11 p.m. Pacific, 
or 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm sorry, Howie. Yeah. And I don't know about that one, CB. I'm not sure what cicadas will affect. I just know that here in Ohio, here shortly, we'll be listening to the delightful drone of them going crazy for a few weeks. Yay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Let me switch over to here now. So everyone in the side chat that plants has learned something or whatever, a, a neat trick or something that a beginner homesteader could use, type it in. We want to share any uh, tips, tricks, neat things. While they're doing that, um, one of the things I did was the yogurt containers that are about like that tall and about that big around. Yep. I did a video on those where my daughter was saving a bunch of them. I took them, turned them upside down, took a drill, put five holes in it, instant, uh, <laughs> instant pot. Yep. Um, I did, I've done that with the gallon jugs. The If you go to Sam's Club or Costco, you get those big um, tubs of uh, animal crackers. Once those are done, either you can, you can cut those in half and you got two pots now. Or you just take the, the, lid off, the lid off the top and put drill a bunch of holes in the bottom. You got yourself a nice uh, planter for basil, rosemary, thyme, something like that. All right, here, Courtney, here's uh, has a tip here. Eggshell in the hole when planting tomatoes. Right, that was Dustin, folks. Yeah, uh, Dustin, uh, uh, so I thought, you know, Courtney said, okay. So uh, the other thing, too, is if you don't have some eggshells to put in there, a Tums of calcium. You drop the, those, one of those in, in there in the bottom. Uh, Sean says, <laughs> drip irrigation, super easy to do, saves time. Oh, yeah. And water, pays for itself from day one. Okay, Kathy, I got it. I'll, I'll check into it. And a suggestion from uh, Teresa is at least grow a salad garden. Enough to have, have a salad so you can keep healthy there. And what you can grow in a salad garden, just a small one, just a couple, you know, five gallon pots <laughs> of lettuce, to keep you in salads all summer long. And think how much you pay for those little packages of salad at Walmart or uh, Albertsons or Riley's or wherever. Plastic forks near your seedlings will help keep animals away. Yeah, you know, so you put it with the forks up and turn, and forks are kind of turn, so you turn them out away from the plant. So, yeah. Not the other egg, way egg around. Tart, egg, egg cartons, especially the, well, actually, either way, if you have the uh, the paper egg cartons, you know, the ones that, you know, the compressed paper, you can actually just cut, cut the little egg things out once you've got seedlings coming up and plant the whole thing. They'll grow right through it, and it'll be good. Uh, <laughs> the other thing to do to them, if they don't have a hole in the bottom, poke a hole in the bottom before you put the stuff in, just about a pencil size, so it has drainage and a place for roots to go. If you have the plastic ones, poke holes in the bottom so they have drainage, but then you once the, once the seeds start going, you can just lift it right out and plant the, the seedling and everything. Uh, hang on here. Uh CR says uh, onion is green, has vitamin C, hardy to the cold, they say in Canada. Yeah. Oh, that's something I haven't filmed. I got to I gotta have to video it. The, some of the onions I left in the ground last year in one of the raised planter beds, <laughs> in the, it snowed on top of them and everything else. They're shooting up new shoots, and they're getting bigger. Um, now, when you can eat it like an apple, then you've got some. Call me when you can mm -hmm. eat it like an apple. That's why I sell you. All right, whole egg. Now, see for right, me, a for me, a snack is uh, some lightly toasted bread, uh, generous helping of good old fashioned creamy peanut butter, and a nice thick slice of onion. Makes a great sandwich. Uh, all right, here. We got the liverwurst. Uh, no. That's the worst thing I can put on a sandwich. Ha ha. <laughs> See what I did there? All right. I'm not sorry. I'm looking at Sean, Sean's uh, thing. He's going to try <laughs> the, little, the little plastic fork thing to keep the yeast and bear away from his garden. 
Uh, uh, Sean, if you're going to be doing that with moose and bear, you got to use actual pitchforks. <laughs> it has to be sturdier than their hoof. All right. Duncan uh, 1900 has put out a very, very excellent season. Froze again. All right, Olaf. Am I frozen? You were. I thought, just, I, thought, I thought I was just sitting here looking at it. So get to know <laughs> your gardening neighbors. Offer to help elderly neighbors with their gardens. You'll learn a lot. True. And they'll share it with you if you're helping your elderly neighbors. They'll share it. They'll give a lot away. They will yeah, share a lot. Usually, with you. Most of the older people I know that grew gardens up in Michigan, and of course it's been a minute or two since I was last up there, but they usually grew enough to feed like 18 families. You know, most of them had like an acre of garden for a house of two people, but they shared what they had. You know, they worked as a co-op while one family planted corn and watermelons. Another one would plant uh, cabbage and squash and stuff like that. And, you know, through the course of six or eight different houses, they had their entire garden, you know, all their vegetables for the entire year. And they swapped and they all canned and, it, you know, in some of the rural areas, you know, you, you get hooked up with the right group of people and all you had to do is grow one or two things. I mean, for one year, all we grew were radishes and we still had enough vegetables to feed us all winter long. Pull something up here. Okay. All righty. Uh, so, you know, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Good point. I've heard a lot of stuff about Irish Spring, using Irish Spring in the garden for various things. Uh, the first time I ever heard about it for keeping the moose away. Start to get to mm -hmm. <laughs> But the Irish Spring will keep certain bugs away. Yep. Hey, Kathy, uh, you remember the old TV sitcom Golden Girls? Gil's impression of Olaf reminds me of the town that Betty White used to talk about in Olaf. Uh, too much folks. Uh, All right. right. Olaf. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I mean, I could have resisted, but it wouldn't have been funny if I had. True. Folks, if, if you, you can't have, laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at anybody else. Excuse me while I exactly. laugh at myself. Right, <laughs> folks. If Steve's prowling or lurking in the background, hi, Steve. For your garden now, simplest plants to plant for a beginner gardener is tomatoes. You can't really screw that one up. I've seen a few people did. Bell peppers, because I see people, I keep telling them, watch it on the hot peppers. You do not like to be the guy with... 50 pounds of hot peppers and nothing else to eat. So you do a sweet bell pepper and you do a basic tomato plant <coughs> if you started gardening. You can't kill them. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people try, but you can't kill them. All right. Another thing is green onions. It's really easy to grow green onions. You could start cutting off the ones you got from the grocery store and stick it inside pots. Now, that's really easy, and you grow a new green onion and just repeat the process. And, you know, here's something that's really funny. Well, it's not really funny. It's actually pertinent. A friend of mine, uh, two years ago, went out and got a real pineapple, cut the top of it off, put it in some water, let it, it start growing a few roots. He then put it in a big old pot. It's now sitting out here in the front of this house, and it's about oh, two and a half foot tall couple more years he'll actually have pineapples here in ohio Ooh, pineapples in ohio Fresh. that'll be spooky <laughs> now yeah. folks you have to uh, like some groups are doing the gladiator challenge and i do warn people that if you use heritage seeds or organic heritage not a problem but <laughs> if you're using regular store-bought and if it's a hybrid you get two results one, you'll get the offshoot from the parent plant. <laughs> and the other one is a mule, a sterilized version of the plant. <clears throat> All green, no fruit. Uh, 
Uh, all right, let's see what that shows. Hang on here. Oh, okay. it's hilarious. It's They're hilarious. cracking up. In a second, I got to try to. All right, not show, showing on that one. Hang it. I don't have the other one opened up here. Hang on. I got to open another computer, so I got to open one on this computer now here. So, did it, did it. So remember, folks, if you're doing the gladiator challenge, make sure you don't got a mule. All right, let me bring this in here. I got to go. I got to pull this up. See what Kathy's poking me with. Squirrel. Derail. Derail. Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> we just gotta wait until it comes up, folks. There we go. Hey, why is he trying to break in to get our garden? Uh, all right, there we go. <clears throat> hey, Gil, is this guy yeah. trying to break in to get our onions? You didn't change the background. Didn't change the background. Yes, it's oh, right. Jim Yard. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Did you so, folks, yeah, that, yeah. And, and in a sense, it's actually a pertinent point also to, you know, not just two-legged, but four-legged creatures also trying to get your garden. Yep. Try and keep it protected. There we go. There's a better garden. That, All right. Thank you. Uh, let me get back to the, com to the comments here. They're just as derailed. Yeah. Yeah, the comment. Any, uh, I'm looking for other... Garlic, brasa. Okay. Oh, there we go. Here, here we go. Uh, from Howie again. Marigolds. Marigolds is great. Keeps uh, bugs away. Marigolds also keep. I believe it's marigolds keep gophers away because they yep. don't like the smell of the gopher of the marigold roots. All right, and let's see. Any uh, so any other? All right, which ta which Tosh is in here? I'll prep for it. Okay, and I got two uh, two Toshes that pop up in the side chat. One's prep for it. The other one is Mama Bear prepping. Yep, haven't seen her yet. Her prep. Yeah, yeah. She just put out another video today too. I got it. I got it. I got it in the queue to watch afterwards. All right. Abby's life on the farm. Hey. All right. So, any any other suggestions that you would you would give to a a new gardener or someone who's just beginning to garden? You know, something that you give them to help them stay on budget or to help them keep from wasting their budget. Budget? What's that? You mean there's money to that you can have money? I don't yeah, know. What so that is. money they got to allocate from whatever source they get it from. So. Anybody has any other suggestions? We'd like to hear suggestions. Uh, of course, Kathy does the uh, the good the prepper same one. It. Yep. Prepper rule number one: eat what you store and store what you eat. Which I was interesting is because I had um, four um, cucumber plants that I that were supposed supposed to do really good here from the local good. nursery. And I gave one of those to my wife when she was up here, and she's going to try it down there. And she goes, I'm not a big cucumber fan. I go, but you, you've eaten it on a salad. Well, yeah, I don't eat a lot of them. Well, one plant. I, I know our youngest one will probably eat it if you you know give it to him. So Fresh out of the like garden with a little bit of salt. Mm. Yep. Of course, this is probably going to turn a lot of people's stomachs. My dad used to take it, quarter it lengthwise. So you like have like a, like a pickle, pickle spear, only well, only it's not pickled, and he'd uh, smear a little mayonnaise on it. My dad, my dad loved mayonnaise on everything. He also loved horseradish on everything too. Horseradish is pretty good stuff now. Yeah, uh, he used to take uh, his big thing was to take um, tomatoes, cut a tomato in half, salt it, and just a dab of mayonnaise on it, or a dab of horseradish on it, and go to town yeah, on see. it. A treat when I was a kid was taking nice, fresh, red, juicy, ripe tomatoes out of the garden. Uh, um, I'd slice them up, and our dessert was tomatoes with a little sprink sugar sprinkled on top. That was our dessert. And she'd take the green ones and fry those. 
for a really special after dinner snack. Fried green tomatoes. I need to check, I need to check something here real quick. Make sure I got that in the right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay. And bingo. All right. So I need to pull that down there so I don't have, need to have that up. Uh, should I grow big? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You know, if a person has access to dehydrator, great. If it's our new gardener, they probably don't have one. Go out and buy but one. If, or, you know, if they don't want to spend the money on buying one, find a friend who does have one. I got and one. And work, work with them to split part of the harvest for dehydrating it. And they may wind up being able to swap stuff out too. You know, they may be dehydrating one thing and the other person's dehydrating something else and they dehydrate a whole bunch and they swap, swap some stuff around. That gives them a, uh, a broader spectrum of food to eat. I just want a freeze dryer. Yeah, I want a so freeze I'm dryer starting too. a Patreon. I'm starting a Patreon page folks where you can go, go donate so I can get me a freeze dryer. And then Dave, will put, say, Dave will put out a video every once a week on free dry, freeze drying. Actually, I with what I have here right now, I could do one once a week on freeze drying. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh what's this? Okay, what is, what's CR just say? Okay. Um, yes, Anthony did build a um, a uh, solar dehydrator. So that's a that's another plate. Uh, Pimento prepared. Um, so Anthony at Pimento prepared. Uh, built a uh, a dehydrator that he could keep you know, move, moving around so he could acclimate it to the sun all the time. Right, and um, folks, if you're doing solar dehydration, the problem is is air mass moisture. I could do it. I live in the desert, no moisture. Anthony has forty percent moisture, so it has to keep the box hot and air circulated to dry it out properly. Yeah. Suggestion. Go to the King of Random YouTube channel <coughs> and go through. It's a much older video, but Grant showed, and I can't remember the other guy's name, but Grant's the one that passed away, I think. Can't remember. Yes. Anyway, um, yes, it was go, go through their older ones, and they actually created a dehydrator using a light bulb, a computer fan, 12-volt power supply, and they created a dehydrator for less than like 30 bucks that works quite well so i mean if you want to go make do uh, do a diy one go check out king of random youtube channel and i it's probably like three maybe years old maybe a little longer but well i'm sorry cr but they have a lot of stuff on there that is actually pertinent because he was a prepper first and foremost before he started that channel. His premise when he started that channel was teaching how to do things that you would need to under, learn and understand in a grid down situation in a easy to understand way that almost anybody could learn to use it. It's just one of the reasons I started watching his channel back when he started it. Well, like I said, folks, it's also air density, moisture, or humidity. If you're in, like, the south, you're going to have a problem with moisture. And that system that Dave says will work to prevent the moisture buildup inside a dehydrator. Like I said, that video is a couple years old now, but it's still a good video to learn. And I think it's actually called a DIY solar, but I don't remember. If you want to learn how to set things on fire really easily, go look at their Fresnel lens. Oh, wait, that doesn't relate to gardening. Everyone is that bugs, yeah. I'm just keeping up here. Oh, yeah, how he's pointing out. So, like, when I started in the beginning, I was showing all those. Uh, those that came in late missed it. I was showing a whole bunch of uh, pictures of... Um, just lost it here. Brain fart. Uh, uh, buckets and other containers you can use for raising a garden in. Uh, even those oblong uh, totes and stuff, you cheap ones you can get at Walmart or whatever, 
for the round. We still ones. ain't mentioned it yet. So now it's my turn to kick you in the butt. Great big huge totes that they use the white totes with uh, aluminum cages around them make yeah. great raised beds to keep the smaller predators out of them. Yeah. And that would be hang on. Uh, hang on one second. Let me pull this up here. Tab. All right, I'm going to show it to you then. It, Al, quit breathing so hard in the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's not an X-rated channel, folks. Really, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been right. out that long. All right. Beautiful full playlist. All right. So down here near the bottom, I will show it since Dave's been bugging me about it here. Hey, Urban. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Tomato cages. Uh, well, because you know what? There, there are some people who may be a little intimidated to start one but they live near farms have access to these containers because some farmers when they don't want them or need them or they get too many of them they're still usable they just set them out next to the road with a sign that says free exactly there right there folks. So right there. here's what i did i took took it cut it in half and so i got two of them here and right now i'm just uh i'm refurbishing them so i'm taking all the dirt out of them and tossing it from one into the other one this has a bunch of rocks yeah. in the bottom for air, uh, for the, ah, uh, dang it. Commercial. Commercial. Ah, yeah. I said commercial want? skip ad. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> and here it's, you know, you know, I'm moving them around with the, with the tractor to, to go and work and play. I put all the, uh, the piles of manure. Oh, look at that pile of manure I got there. How we'd love to have this pile of manure here from all the cows. It's a little stinky. Oh, it smelled nice. So, but basically, all right, so there it is. The IBC uh, Tote Planner Rebuild Part 1. That's one of the videos you can check out. I also redid the 55-gallon uh, barrels cut in half. Those make great planners as well. Happy, Dave? Sort of. Last public service announcement is where I live, my friend landlord actually has one of those sitting out front for free. So if you live near me, get a hold of me. You can come get it. We just don't wow. have the room right now to. We don't have the room right now to use it. Okay. And there's no room to hang on to it to keep it for next year, because we got a lot of stuff here to do first. And one of the things is, you know, if you need to move these around, what I did is I put a bump, uh, bunch of bottles in the bottom. I glued the lids on to create an airspace so it's lighter. So basically raise the dirt level up so I'm not bending over so far, you know, hurting my back and everything to uh, pull, you know, work the garden. Also makes it lighter for moving it around. Also, the space in between the um, the, the bottles, I'll put uh, fabric over the top of this, mm -hmm. a weed blocker fabric. And there's the weed, weed blocker fabric down on, on there and putting the dirt around. But it, it'll settle down in there and so water can sit down in the bottom there. You can still draw water up. So All right. Or Carol oh. makes a good comment too. Which one here? Carol's. Check what farms? Yes. Exactly. There's extension services at in every state and, and so, in some areas, in every county, they have junior colleges who have extension programs uh, linked up to their horticulture department and stuff. Now, time to plug Howie's channel. If you are new to gardening, absolutely, positively a true greenhorn when it comes to gardening, go watch Howie's channel. He has a lot of information on the pathway, uh, soil bank, <coughs> sorry. Um, go there, watch a lot of that. You'll learn a lot. One other channel, which we have not mentioned yet, is right, Ron Nethel's channel, The Green Wizard. I'm bringing um, he up also has a lot of stuff. What? Do what? I'm bringing the book up right now. Guide. So, so there, there, there are resources available, not just us three up here. There are other YouTube channels that have been doing this far longer, have a lot more tips and tricks embedded in their YouTube channel videos, so you can go look. Yeah. Uh, Dave, keeps on, evening. Yeah, Dave keeps on buying the... Um, 
paperback and I keep the giving paperback and giving it away. Tell them, you know, get the soft copy. It's, it's but I can't loan it out. But then he can't. He, oh, you can loan it out. No, I can't. Uh, to, yeah, you can. On a Kindle, you can loan it out to somebody, uh, but they can't keep it. <laughs> Is, and you, you loan it out to them for a couple weeks. All right, I want it back. Sorry. And you pull it back. But yeah, there's a Green Wizards guy. That's Ron uh, Netzel. Netzel. Uh, very good book. And it's um, written in a very informative yet humorous, dare I say, comical way. He's it's written in such a way that even a snowflake could use it and you do it. All right. And what I know we have no snowflakes here. We all have sure, very sure. intelligent people on our side chat. Right. No carrots either. Yeah, I can't speak. The book is written in such a way that even snowflakes can follow it. Right. All right. We're at the top uh, of the hour almost. Yeah. I know. Hang on. I want to throw these up here real quick. And so there, and then there is a Howie's channel, Food for Farming Culture. So Kathy's put, doing a great job of putting these down in there. Also, Kathy's channel, North Star Prep Stetter, um, every week has an hour live stream. She just as crazy as the rest of us. Uh, and she talks about herbs and everything else and all that is, you know, and you can go back and just watch her live stream for the last year. Um, Monday night at what time? I'm having a brain I mean, fart here. She even shows you the indoor setup she created um, on her plant starts. Yeah. And she shows you how she sets it up, how she adjusts the lighting. So if you're really new to it, definitely go check out Kathy's channel as well. 6 and Central, it, 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes. There we go. Five Pacific. No. Five Mountain, four Pacific. Four Pacific. Sorry. Sorry and three o'clock if you live out west. All right, All right. Dave. See. Tuesday. Tech Tuesday. I'm going over basic computer parts. Uh, we're going to go over social media platforms such as Discord, Twitter, Instagram. Um, everybody's favorite platform, Facebook. Um, and we're going to help teach you how to understand the technology, how to use it to benefit you as a prepper, homesteader, and if you so choose, how to create awesome videos to get people to watch you. Yeah. All right. And then following that, and I got to do all at, that in an hour. Ugh. And that's at nine o'clock uh, Eastern time on Tuesday. Then at 10 o'clock, it'll be over for my other channel. Gray man prepping. And the topic is going to be major mistakes that beginner preppers make. So I'm on at 10. Dave's on at 9. How'd you like that picture, Dave? Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Steve would like that one a little bit better than me. Looked like there was a boat in the background. Yeah, it could be. Even though it wasn't, I like it the like cowboy Moffat. It's a lot better than a Rambo Moffat or some guy <laughs> running around with plates and camo hitting a tree. Yeah. And thank you, Kathy. Kathy just put the link to the channel in there, followed by the link to Dave's channel. So thank you. There's mine. There's Dave's. If you haven't subscribed to either, either of the other channels, go ahead. What I did was I moved all my emergency preparedness and prepping stuff over to the other channel because some of the, uh, the topics I'm going to be getting into might get dinged by the, our, uh, the platform host here may or may not. I don't know. They're acting weird. So That's I wanted to keep Chinese. it. Keep, keep, I want to keep the, the camp patent family compound, a family friendly channel. So I'm just doing guarding and homesteading over here. CR. I thought you said that about my channel, man. Now I'm broken hearted, man. <laughs> Anyway, to our Chinese overlords, everything here is harmless, and we're talking in just nothing to see here, folks. Please right. move along. Nothing to see we're here. We're harmless. Do not yeah. kill us. We're not Russians. Not yet, but <laughs> all righty. So, um, any other final words from anybody out there? Uh, I uh, 
Let's see what she's saying. It's looking for sell some affordably. Okay, there's a question there, folks. If anybody knows, not just the Brazilian gardener, anybody else knows, uh, she would like to, uh, uh, Carol would like that information. No. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, never mind. I'll shut up. I misread yeah. it. Never mind. I, I misread it first, too. All right. If you're looking for oh. seed stock it, it, for rare varieties, it's going to be six to eight <laughs> weeks before delivery. Oh. And that, oh, shoot. That Go just ahead. reminded me of something. New um, gardeners or those that are stuck on a budget, there are uh, some great channels out there. One was in here earlier, uh, Wide Family Farm. Um, if you get a hold of uh, um, Courtney. I know Courtney, Courtney gives away uh, Audra at um, Homestead in Idaho was uh, doing it. Um, 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 okay, here, let's make giving this. Away, they were giving away seeds and, or doing a seed swap. That was if you're Kate looking Gardner. for seeds, there are multiple channels that do seed swaps throughout the year. Um, and the best way to find it is there are certain two channels that really announce it along with Courtney, Big Bear Homestead and the Broussards. They both, those two big channels and they are big channels talk about the seed swaps that go on multiple times a year and they can help you get hooked up with people in various growing zones to get the seeds that will actually work where you're living. If you get seeds from Florida and you live in Minnesota your growing season is not going to be the same and your produce isn't going to be as good. Get what you live with. Don't get stuff that grows in zone 7B for zone 2A, okay, and right. vice versa. And if I can find it here real quick, um, S-N-A-K-E-R-I-V, Snake River, where is it? Seed Cooperative. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, a lot of people. A lot of people have been saying that there's a shortage on uh, seeds out there, and I've seen some shortage for certain things at both Lowe's and Home Depot. Just when I'm in the shopping, I always swing by just to look to see if they have something neat I can use. But the Snake River Seed Cooperative has a lot of stuff, and their stuff is region. You know. For the uh, the northern mountain areas, you know, are um, what the seeds are set for. So if you're like Minnesota, northern Ohio, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, <laughs> Montana, Colorado, uh, Wyoming, and stuff like that, these guys have lots of seeds, and the seeds are acclimatized to the northern regions and shorter growing. Seasons. And Rebel brings up something I had totally forgotten about myself. And now that she's mentioned it, I remember it. When I lived up in Michigan, the local library, the city library, the public one, actually had an area in near the front that was a place for grower or farmers and other people who had big gardens to you know swap seeds with. So if you have a public library, um, especially in your rural areas, check there. You, know, you never know. You might find free seeds. Right. And folks, if you're doing the Gladiator Challenge from the grocery store, make sure it's organic and heritage. This does not work well if you get a hybrid or GMO-based ones because you're going to have weird results. You're going to have undesirably looking food. It may taste good, but it won't look good. Or the other thing, you'll have a nice green bush and there's no fruit. You got a, a mule. I keep telling this to people. Because they'll do either the parent or it's going offspring because it is a mule. There's no fruit on it. So you have a nice big tomato bush, no flowers, no fruit. All right. Uh, Kathy just put a, a bunch of them there. Uh, Baker Seeds, MI Gardener, Johnny Seeds, uh, Pine Tree, Valley Seed, seeds. Southern Seed, Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. If you need seeds, talk to Kathy. She can help help you find seeds for your area. Now, and area. Here's something interesting, guys. Baker seed, uh, Baker Creek seeds. When my daughter tried getting some stuff from there about a month ago, no bueno. But then, then uh, I think a couple weeks later, they had the seeds. 
she didn't order them. And then they were gone again. And so they, they have seeds come and go on some of the stuff. So if they don't have it at first, keep checking. And when they get, do have it, get it. It's you just like gasoline, a, folks. People right. are buying it like they're buying them and hoarding it. Hoarding it? Good grief, words are difficult this evening. Sure. They're hoarding <laughs> what they're buying instead of being smart. They're causing issues for other people. Right. Because they yeah. can't see past their own nose. Right. And folks. Hey. Old school prepper. Hi, hey, Martha. hey, Martha. Got everyone. If you know someone that's just starting out in gardening as well, Old School Prepper is another channel to recommend. She posts a lot of good videos on people that are just, you know, I mean, well, things that you, they can use when they're just starting out. She talks about <laughs> all the stuff. I can't say enough. Go check out Old School Prepper for some of her gardening stuff. They're really great. Night, Howie. Another, another thing I want to say is, and I don't think, I don't know if, I think Martha mentioned it once. I don't remember for sure, but I think she did. But at your local co-ops, your local garden swaps, you know, that they have in a little city park, you know, once or twice a month throughout the summer, go there and you'll find plats, the little plastic trays. There's usually a boatload of them sitting that they're getting, some people are just going to throw them away. They make perfect seed start. So check out those places. You can get little seed, those little plastic plats, so you can start your seeds indoors. Yeah. Okay. And for people on Sunday, see these? You can win from Garden State Gardener. Check out his channel. Get signed up. He does give away on seeds. And that's a yeah. fun Sunday, too. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, to check in is your local community college. Uh, if they have a horticulture department, there is a, there's a resource there for information and possible free plants or excess seeds. Right. Like I went to ours in our this Saturday last Saturday, and I got a mission fig tree, so I got to figure out where to put it. Okay, and I just thought of the other thing I thought of earlier today when I was outside. See, some of these live good. streams, folks, they have more information than we can actually spit out in an hour. So if you hear, a if we cover a topic, either Gil or myself or Al, we cover a topic and we seem to run out of time, don't hesitate to email us and say, hey, look, you guys mentioned this, but we didn't get enough information on it. Email us and we will recover that topic and go into more in depth of what you're mentioning that you wanted more information on. Don't sit here and say, Oh man, I, I just missed. Let us know. We'll, we'll come back and we'll redo whatever you need to know. Hey, we'll, we'll do a part two. If we need to, if it's that much stuff, right. we can do a part two. Yep. Right. We aim to please once a week and that day just might be your day. Yep. All right. Here's uh, something else. Google master gardener program near me. Uh, there's a master gardener program in everywhere in the United States. These are people that are that who's they garden a lot. They're out there to help you start your garden, get your garden going. Um, if you have problems with it, there's a resource. The master gardener pro, master gardener program is out there all around. And let me see if I do take off just the uh, this would see we just master gardener program. Uh, here, that's the one here for the University of Idaho, which is right up the uh, road from me up here in uh, Idaho Falls. But then there's other ones around. Um, University of California runs it out of all of their campuses. So, you know, there's, you know, it's everywhere. And it's a great resource. Now, there are some places that do in the spring do a uh, sort of like an emergency preparedness fair, only it's a gardening fair. And they have classes, they have people bring stuff in. And my wife has picked up more free strawberries from those, you know, seedlings from those uh, um, show, you know, the, the, the uh, gardening fairs every year. She has so many friggin' strawberries all over her front yard. Just check the video out, I put that on it. But uh, yeah, so you can get stuff you know through the master gardener program and find out about these other things going on as well okay just for a side note because i actually don't promote this often enough i do have a discord channel 
Um, it's free. I don't charge for it. It does cost me stuff. I have over two gigs of downloadable PDFs covering everything in the prepper mindset that you might need to know about. Everything from soil bank stuff all the way to beekeeping, animal husbandry, everything you could ever want to know but we're afraid to ask. They're all free to download. There is a cert- there's a separate sec- area just for all the PDFs. Come join the group. There is discussion once in a blue moon on there. But the more people we get on the Discord channel, the more discussions we can have. And that is the fastest way to reach me is I'm on the Discord channel. Send me a private message there. I get immediate notifications on my phone. So that's the fastest way to reach me if you have questions on anything. All right. Any other work, uh, tips or anything else before we end, end this, folks? Now, if you're out there in the side chat, it takes a, we got about a 10, 15 second delay. So get typing really quick and we'll, you know, that way we talk, talk about stuff. Uh, Al, any final words? Other than a few things going on around the country, uh, on the West Coast, be careful of rabbits, either wild or domestic. If you have a domestic rabbit and it looks sick, take it to your vets because we have hemorrhagic fever. And a lot of people don't understand it. This is not the rabbit disease that Australia has. This is hemorrhagic fever. If your rabbit starts vomiting yellow and your kid starts vomiting yellow and you start vomiting yellow, please go to the hospital. Okay, there's another point right there on on Unbroken 1010. Yeah, coffee grounds are great in the garden. The great new right, compost Dave. pile, too. Yeah. See. Dave, anything else? Just pay attention, folks. I've given plenty of warnings on my YouTube, on my live streams, and All they're right. coming to fruition. So please pay attention to what's going on around you. Wake up. Don't be sheeple. Yeah. All right. So, final word Dave is at nine, thir- 9 o'clock on Tuesday. We'll be doing tech stuff on computers and setting up stuff for. Uh, doing YouTube stuff and everything like that. And then I'll be doing uh, uh, major mistakes that beginner preppers uh, make at 10 o'clock. And with that, everyone, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, plan 